D-Lo 404 Boxing. All right, y'all. It's due time for me to get on this Taylor uh, versus Ramirez talk. I've been, I made a video about it a while back, um, but uh, it's time to get back to it because uh, the fight's here this weekend. I'm excited about it, and we all should be excited about this battle undisputed at 140. Um, I want to throw something out there that I want to come back to. 32, 25, and 1. That's a record. 32, 25, and 1. That's a combined record for three fighters. All right? Now, let's talk about this fight. Josh Taylor. We saw Josh Taylor versus Regis Progray, and I want to be the... I want to come right out here and admit that I ate crow on that fight. I picked Regis, Regis Progray to win that fight. He didn't win it. Um, I felt like the fight was close. Apparently so did the judges because it was a split decision, if I remember correctly. Um, although, you know, judging went one way on, you know, may have been a little far on one of the cards or something. But, you know, sometimes you get that when you're in a fighter's home country or home region. Um, but all of that being said, I felt like it was a very competitive fight. And Josh Taylor showed me some things that I didn't think he had. You know, he had some real true grit, um, toughness, tenacity. The, the guy's smart in there. And um, he, he's not going he's not gonna wilt. He's not going to take a back step unless he absolutely has to. Which in most cases, for him, I think his confidence is, is so high. That he feels like if he meets you, when you step forward, if he step forward with you and he meets you in the middle, that um his shots are going to prevail and you're going to be the one taking a step backwards. You know, Ramirez, on the other hand, you know, we've seen, I've seen Ramirez in several fights. Um, most recently, the fight versus Postal. I felt like he had some problems in there at times. But I felt like Ramirez never allowed Postal to completely take the play away from him. Um, he he was the reason that Postal never really committed offensively to just trying to uncork more than a, a one-two at a time or a series of jabs followed up with a you know a hook here and there. I felt like what Ramirez was delivering back to Postal is why Postal never really opened up like that i know he fights a certain way often but i felt like this was an opportunity where the stakes were high enough that he was really you know in a position to try to do something different and really you know seize the moment but i think ramirez determination never let him take it away um ramirez showed some some real aggression you know in that fight i felt like he utilized his jab you know at, at times in a way that neutralized some of the movement that post all was giving him and honestly i feel like a fight with taylor i feel like taylor is going to look more like post all than josh taylor in the fight versus ramirez i don't feel like he's going to i don't feel like he is going to just throw reckless ab abandon in there and just stay in there and try to bang with, with ramirez because honestly if if he's looking at what ramirez does well and where he has deficiencies, it would be to his advantage not to stay in the in the pocket with Ramirez unnecessarily. So I feel like he'll be on the outside more, even though he doesn't have the longest of arms and longest of reach for his for a guy his height. But I feel like he'll utilize what length he does have to his advantage to try to stay on the outside where he can and sneak inside and try to, you know, get shots in and get back out. But at the end of the day, the way these two guys match up, there's no telling. We may have a phone booth fight. Um, I feel like both guys are going to try to invest to the body. And I, I think the fight may be won on body work. Now, I'm not going to say that I think either one of these guys are soft to the body per se. I think both of these guys can take, take a good punch you know, up top and to the body. I just feel like that uh, an accumulation of punches may be what happens. But then again, when you think about the features of both guys, I have to wonder if Josh Taylor's 
features will hold up because I saw how his face looked late in the pro grade fight. And if Ramirez can invest to the body and get him to bring those hands down and then go back upstairs, I think he can get Josh Taylor out of there. And the one thing that I want to go back to that I said at the beginning of the fight, 32, 25, and 1. That's the record of Josh Taylor's opponents in his three fights where he fought on U.S. soil. Josh Taylor has fought the lion's share of his fight in Scotland and in other places in the U.K. Although he has, he is the rare U.K. fighter who has had fights in the U.S., I have to look at the level of competition of the guys that he fought or the records of the guys that he fought and beat in the United States when he was outside of his comfort zone. Ramirez is a far cry from 32, 25, and 1. And if you break down that 32, 25, and 1 and look at what those guys' records actually are, I want to say only one of them had a decent record. But because I didn't note that down for this video, I'm not going to try to remember what they are. But 32, 25, and 1. I just think the moment and the pressure of not only the fight, but the pressure of Ramirez will be too much for Josh Taylor. I'm picking Ramirez to stop Josh Taylor late between rounds nine through 12, and I'm ready to eat crow about it if I'm wrong. D-Lo 404 Boxing, like, share, comment, subscribe. I'm out, Pete.